The UN has just warned that the number of Syrian refugees could swell to 3 million by the year's end. Well, the World Food Programme is planning on ramping up its operations by 47 percent to target 2.5 million people in Syria by April, stating that the food situation countrywide is getting worse. Now, $1.5 billion was pledged by international donors at a conference in January, but only a small fraction of this has been received so far. Well, joining us now in studio to talk us through the challenges involved in getting food aid to those in the most need of it, as well as preview an event in Dubai due to be hosted uh, next month, is Ashraf Hamouda, the Head of Partnership and Business Development for MENA, Central Asia, and Eastern Europe at the UN's World Food Programme. Ashraf, welcome to the show. Thank okay. you for having me. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being with us. So to start things off, take us, I guess, uh, for our viewers, take us through exactly what the World Food Programme does and, and how that translates into what you're hoping to uh, accomplish in Syria. WFP is the world's largest humanitarian agency. We are reaching out close to 100 million people in over 70 countries. What a lot of people don't know is that we are the lead agency for the UN. So as soon as a crisis happens, we have to be on the ground within 6 to 12 hours and helping out the people whether with logistics and food. So we're in charge of the aviation uh, as well as the hubs. So believe it or not, in Dubai, we have the world's largest UN hub. And we are hosted by Sheikh Mohammed and, and, and uh, in the International Humanitarian City. Uh, in Syria specifically, we've been there since 1964, helping quite a bit, whether it's the Iraqi refugees or school feeding programs or even in the droughts starting in 2006. Right now, due to the sad situation, we're trying to, to scale up our operation to reach 2.5 million people. And it's pretty sad out there. Absolutely, some fairly overwhelming figures. I, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the Iraqi sure. refugees. I know you've worked extensively with them. And of course, in Syria, for many years, uh, it, the country had the highest number of Iraqi refugees sure. anywhere in the region. Now, what's happened to these people? Have they been forced uh, to return back to Iraq now? Well, it, it was not mainly forced. It was just because they had to go. And, and now the situation is reversed. So now we've got close to about, we're reaching out to about 30,000 refugees, Syrian refugees in Iraq. Uh, at one point, uh, up to 2011, we were reaching out to 160,000 Iraqi refugees. Some are still, still in the country, but a lot have moved back. Uh, I, I, I guess, I mean, looking at the situation in, in Syria, I mean, it's estimated we're looking at you know, over 70,000 uh, people who have been killed uh, since uh, the revolution started. Um, in such a dangerous climate, you know, how do you operate? How do you make sure that the people in need are getting this food? Uh, how do you operate in such a, a difficult situation? We try to work, we, we, first of all, we work with the Syrian Red Crescent, so that's there. Plus, we're dealing right now with about six NGOs. We're planning to reach out to about seven NGOs, but the situation is still very dangerous. Just the biggest depot that we had in Damascus was hit by mortar fire. So we had there enough stock to feed 500,000 people for a month. Uh, three of our trucks got, uh, you know, thank God nobody was died in this, but three of our trucks were stolen to take, again, food that was in, uh, destined for Deir Zur. So we are living in dangerous situations, uh, but we deal with both, both parties or both groups. We have to because the, the whole idea is to reach the beneficiaries as efficiently as possible and as safely as possible. It's such a difficult situation over there. Now, uh, earlier we mentioned the fact you are planning to increase food supplies to the right. people of Syria. Tell me a little bit about this. Where does your funding stand today? How much does it need to increase to if you are to be able to keep up with this kind of demand? Sure. Well, the situation is scaling up pretty fast. We, our shortages is about, about $156 million that are need to be raised to be able just to cover up to June. Uh, donors have come in, but uh, still, it is never enough. And that's why we do events uh, to reach out to the private sector, to reach out to individuals, uh, even if it's a little bit. Because in terms of emergencies, 50 cents is enough to feed a person for a day. So you can imagine you know, a family in need. Again, you're talking about basic foodstuffs. So when we prepare a food basket, because of the bread situation and the shortage of it, we're going to start adding five kilos of uh, flour into the food basket to be able to enable people to make their own bread at home. I, I mean, I, I know you do have uh, a fundraising event uh, scheduled uh, here uh, in Dubai on April 17th. Sure. I mean, looking at the numbers you need to accomplish, uh, how confident are you that you will meet your targets and, and what can people do to, to be involved? Sure. We always say a volunteer's heart is the strongest heart because people do give from their own. And we were blessed to deal with, um, um, I will mention today, Mokun Menda, who is basically the family and, and, 
they, they stood together to, to hold this event for us. And this event promises to be the first big event in the Middle East to be able to raise funds. Uh, our target is a million dirhams. We hope to, to uh, uh, go beyond that. But it is the first type of event that we plan to, to, to raise funds. Um, so basically, a lot of families, a lot of individuals, a lot of corporations have donated money to be able to make this event come through. So like I said, 50 cents or you know, whatever it takes to is enough to feed. So a million dirham, you'd be able to reach out to quite a number of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hopefully people are generous. Of course, we're going to be putting all the details of this uh, up Thank on you. our Facebook page if people do want to donate. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Best of luck with the fundraiser. Thank you.